What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat. Today we're going to be checking out a game where we're going to like evolve some dinosaurs, fool. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be like sprinkle a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You take over the role of a god in this game and it's sort of like kindergarten or other games where the point of the game is just to start over over and over again to see what you can evolve each time around by changing the criteria of the planet that you're forming and you unlock each one and it goes into like a big book Pokemon style until you are the ultimate god who has evolved all of the things. Let's go ahead and play free mode for a little bit. Uh, my cube size is going to be small. Sounds good to me. Uh, no, do not, and no, do not. We'll start over from scratch here so that you guys can get an idea for what the game is like. Welcome to the Unknown World. Do you know who I am? Have we already met? My memory is fuzzy. There's nothing that'll prevent you from progressing. I don't have a name myself, but if you want, call me Navi. The only thing left is your avatar. Let's give it a name. We're going to name him Broblox the Mighty. All will worship Broblox. My job is to birth life on worlds like this one. I don't really get it, but it seems like the best approach is just to let you handle everything. All right, then. Take it from here. And so this is the overworld view of our map. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. We can look at stuff. But where it gets really interesting is when we press the Y button. I'm actually playing this with a controller because I find the experience to be a little bit more satisfying with a controller. PC controls aren't bad, but I like the, I like the Xbox controls better. Uh, we can actually lower terrain and raise terrain using right and left shoulder button. So right shoulder button makes it go up. Right trigger makes it go down, and then if we want to do some other stuff, we could expand the controls out with the left button. It's all at the bottom of the screen. You'll get what I'm doing. But if we want to evolve life, if we want to evolve life, I think we need a primordial soup first. And so let's use a little bit of our HP in the bottom left-hand corner to start making a body of water. How's that sound? And so we'll just make a little bit of water over here. It's probably going to drain off most of our HP, but nobody said we weren't a giving god, because we are. You know, we want this planet to have a body of water, so you know what, damn it, we're going to put a body of water on this planet so that life can thrive and grow. And then from there, once our HP is all nice and out, we're going to go back up to the overworld screen with the Y button. We're just going to let time pass. On the overworld screen, if you use left shoulder button, it'll make time go slowly, like so, so that you get HP back. Or, ah, phytoplankton have grown. Either that, or you can press left trigger to make time go very quickly at the expense of your health. And so within about 25,000 years, we've already ended up with quite a few phytoplankton, actually. 43,000 phytoplankton just doing phytoplankton-y shit, hanging out in water, doing phytoplankton-y stuff. And so that's going to be the basis for the life that we've created. Now, we can't collect phytoplankton. They're too little. They slip through your fingers too easily. It's very difficult to accomplish, but at the same time, we can make the water a bit bigger so that we can have more of them, because having more of them is going to be a criteria for the next thing to come. And like that, I've accidentally opened up like a mega pit in the center of the screen. So let me take that back up. There we go. So we've got our little pool right here. Now, there's things you're going to want to pay attention to. On the right-hand corner of the screen, it'll tell you the status of any location you look at. So for example, uh, this is one tile low in the shallows, so it counts as shallows. So if an animal says to evolve, it needs shallows, we have shallows. Uh, the air temperature is 0 degrees Celsius because we don't have any land right there. The little sun is for land temperature. The ocean temperature is 55 degrees Celsius. We probably want to drop that ever so slightly would be my recommendation. And so let's take this down a little bit more, yeah? I'm going to have it be like a swimming pool. There's going to be stairs going down because I'm a classy god like that. Although this is going to use up a big chunk of my XP. And so once I get this done and I get it to the temperatures I want it to be at, I'll get back with you. Now then, to give you a rough idea of what I'm shooting for right now, I'm shooting for a creature called a stromatolite. Uh, if you've taken geology classes or done any kind of field work in geology, you will have seen stromatolites. They're like these little tuby things that live inside of, like, limestone. That's where you find them. I've actually got... I hiked a brick that's about the size of my torso down the side of a mountain one time because I wanted to put them in my garden. And so now... I have a big old brick of stromatolites in my garden. It's kind of a big tooth-shaped rock that goes upwards. Uh, the temperature of the planet has gone up slightly. That doesn't matter to us because we don't care about it. We're trying to get the water a little bit deeper. And the reason we're doing that is because if we go to the library right now, we're trying to get this creature to show up. The basis of our life right now is an algae called a stromatolite. Its birth temperature is believe it's between 38 degrees Celsius and 53 degrees Celsius. Its adaptation temperature is between 2 degrees Celsius negative and 68 degrees Celsius, which means it'll become the next thing in its chain if we can get its environment into that part. And so the first step in getting dinosaurs? Who knew? It was to get a whole bunch of mold at the bottom of the ocean. And so I'm gonna do it. Uh, this actually counts as C, though. This actually counts as C at this point. 
which is a little bit of a bummer. Let me play around with a little item I have here. If you press the A button, you can go into your items, and you have a thing called a valley source. If we press the X button, boom, it will create a valley source. And so, yes, that takes us down about where we want to be. There we go. Now we've got the temperature low enough. And so I'm just going to have it match up with that right there. We'll go around in circles until we run out of godly energy, unfortunately. The energy for creation is not with us. We'll give it a little bit more time. We should end up with a shit ton more phytoplankton. And in fact, something new might stop off if we wait long enough. I think when we get to 150,000 phytoplankton, a creature called zooplankton will show up, which is that there it is right there. There's our zooplankton. And so zooplankton is the next thing up the list. It's still equally as interest uninteresting as phytoplankton. But at the same time, at least things are growing on our planet. That's all that matters right now is that we're trying to get things to grow. And so let's get this sea temperature down a little. Oh, shit. I hit the wrong button. My bad. You can hold down left trigger to go supersonic fast. Supersonic faster. And so we'll go to this way. Yeah, and that seems about right. Birth temperature seems good. Let's connect these two pools. Now, it is important to note that your temperature of your planet will change over time as you add more water or as you raise the sea level as you make mountains the overall temperature of the air will change and that's going to affect you keeping things alive but for now it looks like we have an environment that we can get our dear lovely little stromatolites from and so i'm just going to widen this ever so slightly and just give it some rough edges so that it doesn't look like something man-made and there we go now it looks a little bit sexier a little bit cuter let's jump back out to here and see what happens I'm going to go ahead and speed the game along a little bit. Actually, i got to get my HPs back. HPs for the new godly Jesus. And it looks like both phytoplankton and zooplankton have hit their maximum capacity. So let's get our HP back and figure out what's going wrong here, because we need the stromatolites to show up. If the stromatolites don't show up, we kind of have hit a stop block here. And so, until I can get those to go... We're in a little bit of trouble. Now, that gives us C, and I think stromatolites like shallows. And so the temperature here is 50 degrees. That seems about right. What was the temperature we needed? The temperature that we needed has to be shallows in height, and the temperature has to be between 38C and 53C. Okay, so we're right on 50C right there, which means we have a pretty good chance. Oh, that becomes ocean, though, if we go any deeper. Well, here, let's deepen the center, because that should lower the temperature of everything else around to get it more into the sweet spot. And indeed it has. It's gotten us down to 51 degrees Celsius. Or I'm sorry, 48 degrees Celsius. No, not quite yet, actually. Not quite yet. Okay, well, we're almost there. What I can do is I also have an item called a chill stone. What I can do here is I can take this chill stone. It will lower an area by 10 degrees Celsius. This is the easy mode way of doing it, and so that's what we're going to do. So there we go. The water is now 41 degrees Celsius, which should make this a little bit more manageable. It may mess with the uh, phytoplankton and the zooplankton, but I don't know. Let me fart out a couple more. It looks like he's farting right now. It looks like he's using the protection from his booty to, like, knock the ground down. Which is like, and then it knocks the ground down where it's hella hard. So we're at 41 degrees Celsius. This should be about right. Let's wait and see what happens. Ah, phytoplankton are on their way. Well, kind of up. Come on, birth for me, birth for me. Do what you're worth for me. Maybe I need more zooplankton in order for this to work. I don't know. Let's see if we can increase our overall population of critters. I'm going to add another lake over here just because it makes my life easier and it's quick and dirty and it just gets it done. So what we'll do is we'll use one of our valley creators on this side. There you go. Perfect. Looks a little bit better. Shallows are a tiny bit cold, but let's jump back out to the over map and we'll see what happens now that I've added a bit more water to the map. And so phytoplankton should explode. They should be doing their thing. Zooplankton should also find themselves on the rebound. Unless zooplankton can only grow in warm water. If that's the case, then we found ourselves a little bit of an issue. But that's cool. I'm a god. We'll solve, a, we'll solve this shit. We've also got an item that's showed up on our map called a Seed of Mutation. We can go pick that up, but it's not really going to matter because until we have creatures to evolve, not going to help us too much. So let me grab this. I'm also going to suggest that we get more than 31 tiles away and drop another valley right here. Just something a little bit different. And so if that temperature is good. So zooplankton are still kind of upset with us right now. It's 41 degrees over here, and then the air temperature jumps back on this side, and that puts us at 51. 
Well, we had a momentary stromatolite right there. I don't know if you caught that, but we had a stromatolite for a second, and then it went extinct. That's okay, though, because that means I'm on the right path by adding in another lake over here. So let's see if we can... let's see if we can do this. We lost that stromatolite. We lost him, Jim. We lost him. We just... we didn't have what it takes. Because I think he needs stromatolites or zooplankton or something to feed off of, and if we don't have that, it becomes a mess. But actually, I think we're locking in on it now. Think we're locking in on it. He showed up over here, so I'm going to assume that this is the area that we want to use. There we go. Let's try again. I bet we bring him back this time. Come on. Zooplankton are on their way back up. Kind of. Ah, there's our stromatolite. So let's jump down and take a look. I had to add an extra shallow that was a little bit higher temperature. So with this, what you want to do is you want to come over here, and on your controller, you want to get onto the space that it's on, and you want to press the select button. Wom, 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 and we will capture that creature. We now have the stromatolite inside of our inside of our little creature capture information evolve a dinosaur thingy and so its rarity is not very rare its adaptation and fertility is pretty good size is reasonably small shallows needs birth temperatures of whatever to whatever but other than that it should be fine and we've leveled up from that now the nice thing about leveling up is that we can now do this we can actually move more stone now which is great makes our life that much easier and so let's keep this thing going around here we're gonna run this evolutionary chain down to the ground let's go back up to the surface and we're just gonna see if stromatolites make it we're gonna see if stromatolites make it ah they are making it and in fact they're popping up in alternate locations as well so the stromatolite population is on the rise the zooplankton's population is on the rise as well and we've got stromatolites ah we've got cyclomedusa Cyclomedusa, if I remember correctly, Cyclomedusa from my paleontology is a jellyfish? Sounds about right. It's got Medusa in the name, so it's either a jellyfish or something. Is this it right here? No, it's a stromatolite. Ah, there it is. It was indeed a jellyfish. Very cool. So Cyclomedusa's... I can't select that spot right there. With the There we go. Let's capture Cyclomedusa because we've got to keep Broblox the Mighty. We've got to continue getting his XP upwards. So, we've got a primitive jellyfish that float through very hot seas, consuming plankton. They can be found near stromatolites. So their population is roughly 90. They like the height of sea level. Uh, their fertility is pretty good. Adaptation is pretty solid. Uh, but other than that, kind of a middle rank creature. Actually, these shallows right here are not good enough for you. What are you doing over here? You need warmer... This thing's going to die if it doesn't get the warmer water. Yikes. I've got to figure out... Yeah, this thing is not built for cold water. I think it said right there on its on its little description. It said that it needs... Oh, 28 to 63. Okay, we're good. 43 to 53 is what it needs in order to be birthed, and it's already been birthed. Now, we have kind of a unique item on us right now. We have an item, and if I go to my items menu, it's called the Seed of Mutation. If I use a Seed of Mutation, it will then create a new life form from here that we won't have to wait for. So I'm going to do that. So there it is. We've actually fertilized this thing. And if you go into this menu right here, start button, then not game description, library, and then you go over to the tree tab, which I do somehow. Tree tab. Ah, right button. There we go. So let's go to the top of our tree here so you can find out. Look at all this lovely evolution that's about to take place. All these cool things that we can do inside the realm of this game. I loved my evolutionary biology. And so what I'm going to do, look at this tree. Look at that thing. We're actually over here, and we've only done these two. And so there's a lot of places we can go with this. And we can scope it out if we wanted to get things just right. Like some creatures require other creatures to be around. Some creatures just do their thing. A seaweed. And so a seaweed is probably what's going to pop up next. Let's give it a minute and see what happens here. Cyclomedusa is not looking healthy, though. Yeah, Cyclomedusa didn't make it. But we did get Colunia. So let's go see what a Colunia is. I'm pretty sure Colunia is like a seaweed. We've also picked up a seed of mutation, and we've picked up another seed of mutation. So we've got Colunia over here, growing them seaweeds, because we can't have dinosaurs without a little bit of seaweed going in. And so we've captured that. It's now been added to our info. A seaweed that lives in very hot shallows alongside stromatolites. It can be found after breeding the Cyclomedusa. And then we've also, not to be confused with Psychomedusa, Psychomedusa is hardcore as hell and will stab you. Cyclomedusa rolls through town with a strap, just be careful. So our stromatolites are growing, basically topped out on zooplankton. I'm hoping we can get Cyclomedusa to come back. Although once something goes extinct, 
We did get another Stromatolite after we did Cyclomedusa, so maybe that was just a fluke of nature. Now everything appears to be sort of imbalanced by the year 500,000. So, what we'll want to play around with is we'll want to take a look at Cyclomedusa's thing, and we'll want to make a habitat for Cyclomedusa that Cyclomedusa wants to be inside of. So Cyclomedusa, as far as we know, wants to be near Stromatolites. We have Stromatolites over here. Cyclomedusa also wants to be in the sea. And so what we'll do... Now this temperature might be a little bit iffy for Cyclomedusa. However, what I can do right here... Well, I didn't really want to do that, but that was an accident. That's probably going to hurt our Stromatolite population pretty considerably. Oof, that's bad. That's really bad. I opened up a chasm. Yikes. Well, maybe something will grow from there. Who knows? Let's go look at this place over here. I accidentally used an item right there if you're wondering what's happening. I have a nice little thing going on right here. I think what we should get away with is we should create a nice little sea right here for Cyclomedusa to do its thing. So there we go. We'll lower that right there. And then for Cyclomedusa, it said that we wanted birthing temperatures 43 to 53. That looks about right. 43 to 53. That's 35. The temperature does appear to be a tad low right now. What I would suggest is that we have sunlight. Is it possible to use sunlight to raise the temperature a little bit? And in fact, it does look like that worked. The other alternative option is that we can use one of these warmth stones right here. Uh, it might not work the way we want it to, but it'll raise the temperature by 10 degrees, which gets us firmly into the realm we need to be in in order to get that critter back. So let's jump back up to the surface to see how this goes. Ah, Cyclomedusa has returned, and Cyclomedusa is now thriving and getting better. Uh, Stromatolite, however, has taken a hit. Come on, Cyclomedusa, pull through. Cyclomedusa is not pulling through. Cyclomedusa has is having trouble. Well, Cyclomedusa's back up, back down. Okay, well, I think it's safe to say Cyclomedusa is kind of in a strange state right now. Did my warmth stone wear off? What happened here? We picked up a small recovery leaf, and then we also got a normal recovery leaf. Now, is Cyclomedusa happy down here? With Cyclomedusa, I think it needs stromatolites next to it for this to really work. And so what I'll do is I'll increase the shallows over on this side so that stromatolites can spread. We also have loverly little plants right here. Colunia. I think we've already collected Colunia, though. We don't have anything new from there. Instead, we got an item over there, too. Let's go get that item. It might be something that might be helpful. Perfect. And so we've picked up another seed of mutation. My suggestion would be is that we implement a seed of mutation on one of these right here just to see what happens. Uh, we have a seed of mutation right there. Let's use it. Who knows what's going to happen to that algae now that we used a seed of mutation on it. In addition, I would say let's throw a seed of mutation on top of this Cyclomedusa as well. Maybe something cool will happen. Maybe something cool will not happen. It's hard to tell, but we're giving it a try. Uh, stromatolites are not spreading the way that I want them to. But we might just have to wait for stromatolites to become more prevalent. I don't know. Let me see if I can get a few more stromatolites. We'll raise this out a little bit. Although that is messing with my planetary temperature. I have too much water right now. And so at some point, I'm going to have to actually close this off over here. Because I don't think much is happening on this side anyways. Like, we got some stromatolites. We got some little things happening here and there. But I do think that it's a good idea for me to raise this up. There we go. Just keep it kind of, like, bendy and busty in there. Ooh, we have a little bit of... I brought those stromatolites up to the surface. They're probably not going to like that. But what we have going on now is that it definitely looks a little bit more mottled and attractive. Cyclomedusa bounces back. Very... Oh, well, Cyclomedusa's kind of on the edge right now. Cyclomedusa's struggling. I think there's not enough food for Cyclomedusa to do its thing, and so it keeps hitting that cap and then falling back down. And then there we go. I think we just needed to adjust a little bit of the... I think we just needed to adjust a little bit of the seafloor. I think as long as stromatolites thrive, we should be solid. Cyclomedusa's hanging in there, so... It's not going extinct. I think it just can only maintain, like, a certain population before it goes. Like, it looks like it tops out at, like, 500, basically. Cyclomedusa, don't you go on me! 
Yeah, that's what I thought, Cyclomedusa. Ah, Cyclomedusa's numbers just jumped. Big time. Okay, well, we're just going to let this run and see what happens. Eventually, we should get some kind of interesting thing that occurs. Ah, we've got Elrathia. Now, if you guys don't know what Elrathia is, Elrathia is a trilobite. I spent a large portion of my college career staring at Elrathia. Elrathia is kind of an interesting little creature. A big old bug that just tools along the bottom of the ocean doing its thing, eating refuse. Basically, if you've ever seen a horseshoe crab, that's its ancestor. Elrathia is the guy. Uh, you've also got a number of other... Olanellus is another branch of trilobites. Uh, there's Elrathia, there's Olanellus. There's something different between all of them. Some of them have little spike shells. Some of them have pointy shells. Some of them are thinner. Some of them are thicker. It just depends, and that's how they classify the genus. Over on this side, let's find our Elrathia. Where was our Elrathia at? Ah, there he is. Elrathia, what are you doing right now? Let me capture you. And so now we've got an Elrathia, which is our first little scuttle creature. Look at him. He's so adorable. Look at him right there. So with our Elrathia, his birth temperature is 43 to 53. He needs shallows. His adaptation temperature is 33 to 63. We're still well inside that criteria, so I don't think we have to worry about it too much. Let me check my items and see if I've picked up anything useful like a river mouth or anything like that. So you can create rivers in this game that actually have flow. And we're going to need that pretty soon. If we don't have one of those, it's going to be a little bit troublesome for us. we got this little guy down here. He's still okay. Good. This pond over here is thriving. Let's go see how our big ocean on this side is doing because I think we're doing a good job with it right now, don't you? I feel like things are working. They're adapting and they're moving along. Now we've got kind of shitty temperatures over here. They could probably be do with being brought up ever so slightly. Uh, temperatures are a little bit low. Stromatolites are doing their thing. But I don't think we're going to get the growth that we want of Cyclomedusa over here if we don't... Well, let's see. Actually, let's plot a course here. Let's see what's next in our library because that's how we're going to figure out what we want to do next. So if we go to the tree menu, from you, in the height of sea level, we'll get number 51, which is a jellyfish that lives in warm seas near Codium Fragile. Okay, is Codium Fragile over here? This is probably Codium Fragile. Lives among Cyclomedusa in warm shallows. So it's adaptation, that seems about right. 28 to 34 is where we're at over here. So it's right inside there. If we were trying to do it on this side. Like it's close, it's real close. On this side over here, our heat stone has made it such that... All right. Well, the temperature is going up to 32 degrees right now. So if we can get a little bit more ambient temperature, I think we'll be in better shape. Let me get some HP back real quick by resting for like 10,000 years or so. And Elrathia, actually... Ah! Hold up, hold up, hold up. We've got Baragwanathia. Baragwanathia is one of the first plants to ever become landbound. Barwagwanathia. And so let's go find where Barwagwanathia... Ah, there's Barwagwanathia right there. Look at you, little fern. Lovely little fern, just growing over here. We've put in the work, we've put in the time, and now this little fern can thrive. Perfect. We've captured it. It's actually a plant that grows on land. A colony and Cyclomedusa proliferated for that to see. This species began to adapt to life on land. And it more than likely happened very, very slowly over, like, millions upon millions of years. It just got into shallower and shallower water. And slowly, through selection, what happens there is that the plants that have attributes which allow them to survive in the new environment stay alive whereas the ones that do not the mutations that do not make them more thrive worthy i'm not using biological terms right now so essentially the attributes that make them more likely to survive get preserved because they do survive and they are strengthened as well because the breeding pairs will produce that over and over and over again until it becomes even greater as far as mutation goes. And then the ones that could not adapt will either stay in the ocean and be perfectly fine in the environment that they're in. They won't change at all because they don't need to. Or eventually they'll become too shallow or too warm and they'll die off because they don't have the adaption or the adaptation that their little planty brethren have. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Evolutionary biology is a blast. Uh, let's jump back out and let's see what's going to happen here because it's looking like we're going to get a temperature change pretty soon. Uh, Baragwanathia, doing pretty well, actually. Doing pretty well. It's beginning to, and you can see there's actually life beginning to grow. And now we've got something called Astero Xylon. Astero Xylon. Let's go see what an Astero Xylon is. My assumption is that it's a plant of some kind. Probably related to this family right here with Colunia. Ah, it's a grass. Okay. So we've got a little grass over here. Can I capture the grass? Or is the grass not what I'm looking at? Grass does not appear to be what I'm looking at. 
So, Barog Wanathia. Stromatolites. I don't see anything else special over here, but I think it popped up over here somewhere. Ah, this is our new guy. He looks just like, so he's got to be an adaptation of the Kalunia. A Bareg one, oh, I'm sorry, Bareg Wanathia. That underwent mutation and migrated to the plains where water is scarce. So this actually likes dry areas. That's what we just learned about it, is that it can't have moisture in the area. So as this grass starts to spread, this will more than likely die out because it requires desert spaces in order to do its thing. Let's go pick up some items. My name is Splattercat. This game is called Birthdays. The beginning. We're going to evolve some dinosaurs in this series. I'm telling you that much right now. We're definitely going to birth some dinosaurs before this is all over. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. I plan on doing multiple episodes of this because it's a game that I find to be relaxing and a lot of fun. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. A few new items right there that we'll play around with in our next episode. Bye-bye, everybody, and thanks for being here.